Hello, welcome to my tech fan. Tom Top sent me another laser graver for the review. Not this one, but this one which is still in the box. This is 23's TTS 20 Pro, a 20 watt dyed laser with a real optical power of 20 watts, and the engraving area is 400, 400 millimeters. And what I like here that the honeycomb grid and air assist pump is also included in this box. Now, this uh, laser engraver here on the top is the TTS 55, the previous smaller version. This has the laser module of uh, 5 watts. And uh, this is the only 5 watt diode laser I own at this moment because um, this one is uh, very good for the engraving. It has very small and sharp uh, spots. So, for the engraving, it is perfect. I'm curious how is it sold with this newer version because usually if, uh, 20 watts probably it uh, combines uh, four uh, 5 watt uh, laser beams into one spot and sometimes they don't want to have very small spot for the focusing but uh, they prolong the power of that module so we can do a deeper cutting a few words about the safety as usual uh, don't forget that uh, these are tools and not toys so the safety equipment is very important the most important is uh, safety glasses for everybody in that room and uh, use it in good ventilated room and if you use it regularly then build some kind of enclosure and exhaust those fumes outside and never leave the engraver without the attention. Even this engraver has very good solutions too, like this cable management, two stepper motors on y-axis, x stepper motor is not on the moving module. I really like that the position of these whistles wheels is horizontal, not vertical, and the center of the mass of this module is exactly on the cell extrusion. This glass is removable, so it is very easy to position the laser. Anyway, let's see what's in this box. Everything is nicely protected in this black foam. Sometimes it is a little bit tricky to take the parts out, especially the frame because it is assembled. This was content of the package, few main things. The frame is already assembled with the X-Gentry on it. Very nice, this honeycomb grid is included and this protection steel plate. And then this is the air assist pump. I cannot see information about its strength. So here we can adjust the power and this is the power input and this is the output for the air. And I can see two power supply units. Probably the bigger one is for the engraver. The output is 24 volts and 4 amperes. And the smaller one has the output of 12 volts and 3 amperes. I believe that this is for the air pump. But be careful because uh, both plugs uh, are the same. Few words about this laser module. It is incredible how small is this. Here you can see side by side the typical size for 20 or 30 watt diode laser. And incredible that they solved it in this small size. Incredible, 0.37 kilograms, half of the weight of the typical 20 and 30 watt diode modules. This is the input for the air and I can see two cooling fans on two sides. I'm curious how loud is this because usually these 20 or 30 watt diode lasers are extremely loud, especially this cooling fan. And unfortunately this glass is not removable like with the previous version. I'm curious how easy it is to see the laser spot during the framing or boundary check. Or maybe I have to use here the toothpick method I presented a few weeks ago. And we have here some cables, bolts and tools for the assembling, safety glasses. And then this is the air assist pipe. And I can see this is from silicon, which is improvement. I think the TS2 had some PVC or something like that version. And this one is better because it will not break if it is bended. This user manual is in three languages. In first step, I'm assembling the main box unit to the frame. And then this is the cable holder. This is the limit switch for the x-axis. And this is the laser module just sliding in and the one bolt from the side. Fixing the cables with the zip ties. And also on the other side. This is the cable part which goes to the module. Cutting the zip ties. In my case, the timing belts are tight, but if they are not, in x-axis it is very easy because we have this tensioner here. On y-axis I have to lose this bolt, pull the timing belt and then screw it back. And don't forget that this used those V-slot uh, rubber wheels and we have to tie them using this operant wrench on eccentric nuts. But uh, also pay attention that this is squared. For this we have these two lines here and pay attention that this is uh, on the same position on both sides. In that case, this will be squared. 
I mentioned several times that I hate these uh, rubber wheels and as you can see this is the maximal tension I could set here. Uh, properly it will be fine because it has two wide stepper motors and uh, it is very important when you turn it on pay attention that on both sides it is parallel aligned on this line. Since the frame arrived assembled so all the cables are already attached except these two I noticed. Uh, this is for the laser module and this is for the limit switch. And now it's ready for the operating. I'm preparing the honeycomb grid with the protection plate from the bottom, attaching these legs. Setting the focus and we have different distances for different thickness of the materials because for the cutting sometimes we want to go a little bit deeper with the focus. Connecting the air pipe. And it looks like they don't have a prepared solution for the air pipe. I will just uh, lock it to this cable management here. I could use zip ties, but I'm not sure if this will be the permanent solution for me. Let's test the air pump first. It's a maximum now and it is not too loud. And I think this airflow is a little bit too weak, but we will see during the cutting of the wood how it performs and if the edges will be sharp. These are the materials I'm regularly using in these videos, so the results are comparable with each other. Stainless steel, anodized aluminum, black acrylic, different types of the wood, and at the end I will have some kind of card for this engraver. It's prepared for the connection and I really hate when these wires are sticking up uh, on the upper side here. It will be much better if these are on the side or at least uh, to use some kind of cables in the 90 degree angle. This is a slot for the SD card. If you're using the app you will need it. And this is the connection for the display. Probably it can be purchased separately. And uh, not super quiet machine but not too loud and the fans looks like they are always on. It would be better if they are operating only when the model is working. The noise from approximately half meter distance is 60.5 decibels. From the software I will use both. The Laser GBL is a free software available only for Windows, but I can do only one type of the operation at a time. The Liburn is more advanced software available for the Macintosh and Linux too, and I can combine different speeds and power in one operation. Very useful is this table with the recommended parameters and looks accurate and this is for the engraving and this part is for the cutting. I'm starting with engraving and here you can see my parameters in the light burn. And this part is uh, speeded up uh, four times. And these are the speeds and the power and on 3000 mm per minute 60% power looks the best in this case. And the next engraving, as always, I'm engraving this uh, logo here. You can see my settings in the laser GRBL. And this is the real time speed, so you can see how fast is this engraver. Let's analyze this engraving. And I can see that uh, this engraver is great for engraving two very sharp and thin lines I have here compared to those strong uh, lasers. Next is uh, engraving the grayscale image and I needed some experimenting. Here you can see again my settings in the laser GIBL and uh, this is a time lapse of approximately two minutes. Now the image don't look too good because of this line in this uh, plywood. So I decided to reprint this and this time I will use much nicer cleaner plywood. Also I reduced a little bit the power and definitely now you can see how important is good quality wood for engraving grayscale images. So this image now looks uh, great. I think this is one of the best I engraved in the last few months. And then I'm moving to the cutting, attaching the air assist pump. Here you can see again uh, this is the air which goes through the nozzle. So it uh, looks okay, <laughs> even better than uh, when I use the pipe only. So the air assist nozzle looks good. And then I will start with the cutting of this 3mm plywood. And uh, I will use on this sensor this higher step. This part is uh, speeded up 8 times. And on 600mm per minute, uh, full power, it can cut out uh, this 3mm plywood. Next to see the effect of the air assist. So here you can see side by side, on right side using the air assist, on left side without air. And uh, definitely I can see that uh, effect of the air assist is uh, obvious, 
much nicer and cleaner cutting we have with the air and also it is safer. Next is this 5mm thick plywood. This part is speeded up uh, 8 times. And it was cutting out on, even on 300mm per minute but uh, let's see the other side. And I can see it is almost cutting on 400mm per minute and just a small press and it's out. Next is cutting 3mm MDF and uh, as you can see this is very hard for the cutting for some weaker laser engravers. And this part is speeded up uh, 8 times. And let's see the results. Uh, well it looks like it was cutting out uh, up to 200mm per minute speed. <laughs> But uh, when I saw the other side, again, uh, just a small press and uh, actually that part fell out too. So it can cut uh, even on 300mm per minute speed, full power of course. And here I use the air assist, but still I can see those burned edges. Now cutting black acrylic. This is 3mm thick and this part is speeded up 4 times. And I have two speeds here and even on 300 millimeters per minute it was cutting out without problems. And very nice uh, sharp cutting, really small gap between the two parts. And then engraving anodized aluminum, which I really like uh, to do because uh, we don't have fumes, smoke and uh, similar. It is not so sensitive to the setting Snyder. And uh, this is again the uh, speeded up part. These uh, anodized tags are from the Churbarka company. And as you can see, basically on any settings it looks uh, very nice. And then engraving stainless steel. This is the plate I'm always using and these are engraved with 20 and 30 watt diode lasers. So let's see what can we do with this uh, 20 watt diode laser. The speed is 200 millimeters per minute, which I'm using with these stronger laser engravers. This was my last engraving for this video, so I can turn it off now. Ah, much better. Well, it's definitely here, engraved with 200mm per minute, like every 20 and 30 watt diode laser. With the 5 and 10 watt diode lasers, I used 100mm uh, per minute. Now let's clean it with isopropyl alcohol. But for the look and for the feeling, it is not so deep like 30 watt diode lasers, but it is much sharper. And let me illustrate you with this Allen key. So definitely this is engraved into the surface of the stainless steel. Some conclusions for the end. It is very nice that it arrives uh, fully equipment. We have this uh, honeycomb grid uh, with a steel plate on the background, uh, with the air assist pump. And I was really amazed with the small size of this 20 watt diode laser. Of course, it is not so strong for the cutting like those 30 watt diode lasers I tested on this channel. But uh, for the engraving, I have the feeling that it is even better because I can see much nicer, sharper, thinner engraved lines. About this air assist pump, I think it could be a little bit stronger, but depend on the material. With the plywood you saw, I have uh, very nice sharp edges, but with MDF wood, which is a little bit harder for cutting, I could still see those uh, burned edges, so there a little bit stronger air assist pump would be better. With this solution, with two power supply units separately for the pump and for the engraver, we don't have that advantage in the light bar where we can combine different operations, because don't forget with the engraving, you don't want to use the RSC's pump, only for the cutting. Maybe a solution could be some kind of relay, which can be turned on and off by the main board, but uh, this is not uh, something I should solve, but that could be a solution maybe for this problem. The start was not so smooth, uh, I could see a lot of uh, waves on the first engravings and then in the consultation with the two trees they suggested me to place more tension on the y-axis timing belt. So my solution was actually that uh, I was pulling the timing belts with the pliers until my wife uh, tied the locking nuts and only with this I could get uh, nice results. I already mentioned several times that these rubber wheels are not my favorite solution for the linear motion. I can see that uh, more uh, new engravers arise with uh, linear rods or with uh, linear rails, which is much better solution and uh, the user don't have to play so much with those ecstatic nuts and open end wrench and similar. So it is much easier for the assembling. Of course, don't forget that this has very user-friendly price. Uh, maybe in this we cannot fit with those linear rails, I'm not sure. But uh, definitely this is some kind of uh, compromise between the 30 watt diode lasers which are great for cutting and this will give us uh, great results for the engraving but it is also good for the cutting too. 
If you have some other suggestions, you know a few lines in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy and safe engraving.